Our study demonstrates the importance of time in designing combination therapies for killing cancer cells. So we wanted to see if we add treatment one and then wait a little bit of time, how they respond to treatment two, and then if we wait more time, whether the response is going to be different. So we work on a tumor suppressor protein called P53. And the idea of a therapy is to damage the DNA in order for this P53 to go up and activate a program that eventually kill cancer cells. But then there is a problem because there is another gene called MDMX, and MDMX inhibits P53. It doesn't let it do its job in killing cells in response to the therapy. So they are two antagonistic players and, uh, in the regulation of uh, cellular behavior. We're not the first ones to look at the relationship between P53 and MDMX. There are other people that have looked at that, and some studies suggest that if you inhibit MDMX, you get higher levels of P53. But then there are other studies that suggest exactly the opposite, that if you inhibit MDMX, you get lower levels of P53. And what we showed is that both studies are correct because it depends when you're looking. We used the microscope to um, track individual cells over a long period of time to see how the level of P53 can change. So we're seeing a cell, and we're basically seeing the nucleus of the cell, and the signal represents how much P53 there is in the cell. And then once MDMX is inhibited, we see that the signal become brighter, meaning that we have more P53. So we get this first wave of P53, followed by these blinking of the cells, and these are these low amplitude oscillations of P53. This is the first time that we discovered that P53 can undergo oscillations without any stress signal. We found that if we wait 12 hours after this first treatment, then cells become more vulnerable to DNA damage. So when we hit them with DNA damage, we get a synergistic effect and we get more cell death. But then if we wait 48 hours after we suppress the MDMX and then we put DNA damage, it's not that the effect is less synergistic, it's basically become antagonistic. We get less death as if, if we were just using DNA damage. I think there are two major things that excites me the most about this work. First is the fact that in response to the first treatment, like we poke cells, this was one treatment, and then we see two phases of the response. Like in the first 24 hours, they show this one behavior and then they switch into a completely different behavior. And that's, I, I think it's surprising. And the second is the fact that timing matters so much when thinking about combination of drugs. And this will be very important information for us to understand the fundamental regulatory mechanism for P53 dynamics. I'm hoping that our work will encourage others to look at timing as well and to take that into consideration both in basic research and perhaps even the, in the clinic to try and look at which are the best time windows or the interval between two treatments that will lead to the best outcome.